The year is 1874, and while the gold rush was dying in most of California, Grass Valley was considered to be the boomtown that never died. The Twin Cities, as they were often referred to, Grass Valley and Nevada City were the main gold mining districts in the world. It's estimated that about $400 million in gold was mined from this area. Though there was one immense problem, these towns were disconnected from the rest of the world, making it a necessity to create a railroad that would connect Nevada County to Colfax and beyond. Once the bill was passed to build the railroad, it was decided that it would be a narrow gauge. A standard gauge railroad is four feet, eight and a half inches wide, whereas a narrow gauge is only three feet wide. A narrow gauge is much cheaper to build and also it's easier to navigate in sharp turns and through the mountainous terrain that surrounded the area. From Colfax to Grass Valley, it was 16 miles. From there to Nevada City, another 7 miles, totaling approximately 23 miles. The total cost of construction was estimated at $411,123.56, and it took only a year and a half to build. The name of the railroad would be the Nevada County Narrow Gauge. They'll later receive the nickname the Never Come, Never Go because it took a long time getting to town, it would stay for a long time, and it took a long time coming back. Some of the duties of this train were to conduct people, merchandise, and mail, but most importantly, gold. The gold would be loaded onto the train, taken to Colfax, and then transferred to the Southern Pacific Railroad to be taken to the Mint in San Francisco. In the life of the train, it's estimated that it transported a quarter billion dollars worth of gold and never once was reported to be robbed. 1875, the Union newspaper reported the arrival of John F. Kidder, hired to work for the railroad. He was an experienced engineer who traveled the West Coast building and operating railroads. He worked his way to president and was later considered the primary owner. John was a newlywed to Sarah Kidder, who was originally living in Oregon at the time they met. Both John and Sarah were in the more advanced years at the time of their marriage, so they didn't have the opportunity to have children of their own, but they did adopt a girl named Beatrice, believed to be a great niece of Sarah's. Three of them lived in the Kidder Mansion. It was located in the corner of the Grass Valley Station and was the first modern house in the area for the time. The mansion was three stories high with 28 rooms and heated by four granite fireplaces covering 7,800 square feet. Under John's watch, the railroad was almost accidentally free. Only five deaths were recorded and never did he have to defend a single case of a taken life. Though after 25 years of his watch, the railroad lost the man they admired so greatly. On April 10, 1901, John Kidder died of diabetes at his home at the age of 71. As a tribute to the man who was so famous, the schools were closed, flags were flown at half mass, and the cars and stations were draped in the morning. On his deathbed, John signed his shares over to Sarah. It was official at an annual railroad meeting. Sarah was elected president by a unanimous vote, making her the first woman president to ever own and operate a railroad. As president, she was most successful, especially for a job that was regularly held by men. One of the most important things she did for the railroad was the building of the Bear River Bridge, completed in 1908. It was said the to be the highest railroad bridge in California for its time, at 190 feet above the river, saving time, maintenance, and fuel. After the 12 golden years of Sarah Kidder in 1913, she sold her stock and left her home in Grass Valley to move to San Francisco in a community called Ingleside Terrence. About 11 years later, at the age of 82, she then moved again to a smaller house north of the Golden Gate Park. Nine years later, on September 29, 1933, she died in her home at the age of 91. From 1913 to about 1940, the railroad continued to boom. Though as the war began, and with the mines closing, the technology advancing, there became a less need for a railroad. Thus, clothing down which once was seen as the main artery to the heart of Nevada County. She operated between 1876 and 1942 and lived an exciting 66 years and 15 days. Sadly, the Nevada County Narrow Gauge Railroad officially left the tracks. The year is 2010, and as lives are lived, live lives drift away. Never come, never go, yes gone, but not forgotten. All the memories and stories, happy and sad, old and new, false and true, have kept her alive in the Twin Cities, though maybe not as live as some might like to see. And as for John and Sarah Kidder, probably two of the most important people for helping make the Twin Cities what they are now have completely been forgotten. So how can a man that was so famous for his time, a man who everyone loved and respected, disappear so easily? Start by taking a trip to Bennett and Kidder Street and going to the cemetery which the newspaper records show he was put to rest in. John Flint Kidder, though, cannot be found there. Broken and missing tombstones and ruined cemetery records are no help, thus causing most to forget about him. Also, try and take a trip to his mansion that was so famous for its time. Said to be the most gorgeous and modern home in the county, but you can't, for that too was slowly destroyed by fires, apathy, and neglect. Instead of trying to restore something so great, the mansion was torn down in August of 1982, and it too has been forgotten about. Lastly, walk around the rest of the property where the ghost of the narrow gauge cries to be remembered. Instead, you will only find weeds, trash, metal, and the sound of the wind. 
little evidence left of a once thriving train station. And as for Sarah Ann Kidder, who was the only woman to own and operate a railroad, this was a huge accomplishment for her time, and few even know her name today. The death record in newspapers show she passed away and was put to rest in San Francisco, though in trying to find a resting place, she too has disappeared. Because records, structures, and artifacts weren't properly preserved so long ago, we suffered the consequences today. Not being able to go, see, and learn about the train's history and the people and what they did for the community has brought sorrow to many. Hopefully today, society has learned that failure to preserve history has taught us the importance of history preservation. <laughs>